every July 3rd, the day before the 4th, a group of us take our boats out on the St. Croix River just for a little pre-4th of July day. In a split second, what started out as a fun-filled summer day quickly took a shocking turn. A gust of wind came and blew my hat off, and I just made the natural movement to try and grab it in the air. And at that moment, we hit a little wake, and I was off balance on my right foot and fell over the, the side to the right, went fully underwater. As a stunned Justin swam to the surface, he realized something wasn't right. I noticed it was completely dark, and it was the boat that had drifted above me. What happened next would change Justin's life forever. I ended up swimming face first into the propeller and then using my left arm to kind of fight me out of that. The impact of the propeller knocked Justin out, and as he came to, his friends rushed to help get him back into the boat. That's when they realized the extent of Justin's life-threatening injuries. We kind of collapsed on the back end of the boat, and I looked down and just completely covered in blood, and my other friends screaming, call 911. And I realized something must be wrong. What Justin didn't realize in the initial aftershock of the accident was that that propeller had severely cut his face. There are, these are photos showing the full extent of the injuries, but the photos are so graphic that we couldn't even show them to you because his injuries were so severe. But this we can show. This is the reflection Justin saw in the mirror one week after that accident. And this marked the beginning of a very long physical and mental road to recovery, a journey he's still on today. And despite his pain and multiple surgeries, he says he is not letting this setback keep him down. Now in a TV exclusive, Justin is ready to talk for the very first time about his survival story. Tam fam, please welcome Justin Sutherland to the show. <laughs> Justin, thank you so much for joining us. I know it's a lot. I wrote you a note saying reliving this is not easy. It's only been two months. Right, yep. July 3rd. July 3rd, two months ago. You put out an Instagram post and you captioned it with a photo of your stitches and you said, the pain means you're alive. The scars mean you've survived. When you wrote those words, what else were you thinking? You know, just uh, honestly a whole lot of gratitude at that point. You know, I'd spent weeks and months in the hospital and still trying to really put together what really happened. And kind of after I saw the pictures, the pictures we couldn't show and, and, and heard, you know, how severe the, the accident was, I mean, I'm just lucky to, lucky to still be here, still be alive, and, and the gratitude for all the, the love and support that was poured out, so. Yeah. I've heard you describe the injuries, and of course, like anybody else, I see you now and I'm looking and I see the eye injury. Um, you, you almost lost your sight. Yes, that was definitely, I mean, it was all horrible, but I mean, that was definitely one of the scariest parts. I mean, eyes, once they're gone, you know, you, you don't get them back. And, you know, that propeller blade sliced all the way through my eyelid and stopped less than millimeters, you know, before completely ripping my eye out. Um, didn't have vision to start for a while and it slowly started coming back and the doctors, you know, were reassuring me that I, I should regain sight. So we're at about 80% in this eye, not a lot of peripheral. If I sit like this, I can't see yeah. you, but we're getting there. Well, you know, I, I thought about you because I'm thinking to myself, you hear people say you go into shock when something traumatic happens. You right. hear, you know, catastrophic accidents. Did your body go into that shock where you truly a don't remember a lot of what happened? Absolutely. I mean, it's amazing what your mind and body will do in those, in those situations of trauma. I mean, I still to this day haven't felt any pain from the actual accident. Um, How's you know, that so? Because of the I, medicine? I mean, just I think the initial shock and pain. I mean, even when... The doctors and EMT said I was completely conscious from the time from the water all the way until they put me out for surgery. I was talking with my face hanging off and I don't remember that or felt a thing. So, I mean, blessed to have not had to have felt that pain at the moment. I mean, the after effects were horrible, but your body's amazing. Your body's amazing. And the people who were on that boat with you also leaping into action um, were amazing and, and your friends. I, but I have to tell you, this all started though with this natural thing that anybody would do, a gust of wind, your hat falls off, you reach for it. Right. it you weren't being reckless. Right. You weren't, you know, 
overzealous partying, you reached for your hat yep. and fell in. Yep, it's those freak accidents. I mean, you never account for things like that. I mean, moments can change just like that, just from a gesture and a, and, you know, and a small, small wave, you know, change the uh, course of my life for, for a significant amount of time. Coming up, how would you react if it happened to your best friend? After the break, we're gonna meet the woman Justin is calling his hero and hear about Justin's efforts to get back in the kitchen. An incredible story of survival beyond his wildest dreams after the break. Welcome back, we are live and this hour we're sharing inspiring stories of survival from people who've endured life-threatening situations and live to talk about it, back with us is acclaimed chef and TV host Justin Sutherland, whose accident made headlines, A, because it was horrific, but also it put your livelihood, you are a chef, and now you're looking at, after fighting for your life, fighting for your livelihood. Exactly. When do you start to think about that? I mean, obviously in the beginning you're saying, I'm just thankful to God I'm alive, thank you universe, I'm alive. And then you realize, will I be able to do what I love? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, you know, shattered my arm in two places. They still say it's probably about a year of rehab in that. And I was like, you know, if I lose my arm and, and my eye, that's I need both of those, you know, to be a chef and to and to do what I do on television. So there was definitely those to moments do what you of, love. To do what this I love. It's your gift. Yeah. So th those moments of am I going to be able to continue to do that definitely crossed my mind. Emotionally, what was it like once you regained consciousness and? and just knowing this road ahead right. and the uncertainty of it all. You know, it's, it was a roller coaster, you know? You know, at first there's, there's anger, there's frustration, there's this why me situation. Then when you realize how blessed you are to still be here, you know, then I was just, you know, again, very, very grateful. Look at the swelling in your face. You don't even look like yourself, I know. Obvi was, obviously, but it's, it's unbelievable. It, it was absolutely wild. Uh, yeah, and then, you know, going from being, you know, I was moving a million miles a minute, you know, uh, season two of Taste the Culture, just finished yeah. filming, I had two more television projects we were supposed to hit the road for two weeks ago, you know, everything stopped and, you know, just figuring out when, when I'm going to get life back. You know, part of the reason you have your life and are able to be here with us is because of your friend Cassie Beckfell. Um, Cassie joins us now from St. Paul, Minnesota. Cassie, thank you so much for joining us. Um, <laughs> Uh, I know that you've said when Justin was taken away in the ambulance that day, you didn't think he was going to make it. You thought you'd lost your friend. I did. I wasn't sure. I mean, after they took him away, I just was left with, you know, the after, the aftermath of what had just happened. So, yeah, it was, it was pretty scary. What was that? Like, so he's under and he comes, you guys are all jumping in, people are reacting, and then he's brought back up. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the point, I didn't realize the extent of the damage that was done until I got to him. And at that point, it was, all right, this is fight or flight at this point. Like, I got to save my friend. And so, you know, thankfully, everybody on the boat, we all just kind of jumped in and, and did what we had to do to make sure that Justin was okay. You know, I said everybody needs a Cassie as a friend. <laughs> they do. Because you don't know how you're going to react in this situation, especially right. such trauma like this and seeing the freak nature of it all. You weren't prepared for it. There was no bracing for this. It happened. No. Right. Wow. You've had a long recovery. Mo how many surgeries? Uh, I've had three so far and then a few more down the road. They say that'll just be more of some dental surgery, some jaw realignment, and probably some cosmetic stuff, but three major, major surgeries. Three major surgeries, which brings me to this question. How the heck did you finish a cookbook? <laughs> <laughs> this man, I mean, I was like, two months ago, you thought you were going to die. Then you realize you're able to survive, but how? And then you say, let me finish this cookbook while I'm here. <laughs> what kind of superhero are you? Uh, you know, I mean, we, the book's been starting, you know, it's been a passion project for about two years, but we were coming into the end of, of it. And one thing you do when you're laying in the hospital for 16 days and then another two months in bed, there's a lot of time to read and write and think. So, yeah. you know, a lot of those stories and, and lessons I got to put down on paper and, and be, able to, be able to share with everybody. As I said, this month is you know, wildest dreams. In many cases, these are things you never could have imagined in your wildest dreams. You could never have imagined this never. happening to you. No one could. Could you have ever imagined you were so resilient? 
Uh, you know, I think, I don't know if you know what you have in you until a situation like this happens, you know. I, you never you never brace or prepare for that. I mean, yes, there's there's freak accidents, but in a situation to where you're almost going to die, you know, I think what, what's deep inside you kicks in, and it's just mm -hmm. that will to survive. And, and you know, with especially with your friends, I mean, that was a, a shared trauma between all of us. Yeah. So, you know, as, as hurt as I was, I know that, you know, my friends, family, and, and people around, you know, around the world were feeling the same way. So I needed to get back for them as well. Well, we were all rooting for you, and it's an honor to have you on with us. Thank you, thank you so much, Justin. Cassie, thank you so much as well. So Justin's cookbook is called Northern Soul. It will be out next week, but today, Tam fam, our audience is getting to cook tonight because you're all going home with a very special signed copy. Signed copy of Justin's book. Thank you so much. Thank you. Like it, yeah. Huh? Really appreciate it. Thank you.